The true battle between Batman and Superman was never a fictional one. While writers, illustrators, and filmmakers may construct a hundred different matches between the two, the outcome that matters is the one decided in the real world, the popularity contest. And there is an obvious fan favorite. When push comes to shove, and we have to choose between these two powerhouse characters, most of us choose Batman. But I must contest that our willingness to dismiss the boy in blue has mostly been shaped by a farce. The intended image of Superman was sacrificed to make room for others, and the Man of Steel has since become a caricature of himself, a shell of who he once was. A glaring advantage in the fight for the heart of the culture developed many years ago, and we need not venture into the hypothetical world of fictional scenarios to discover how it was Batman that asserted his undisputed dominance with a cheap shot. At least that's how I see it. So let's turn back the clock to the very first full-length issue of an iconic character. This heroic figure was described within the delicate pages of the comic as a hidden figure in the night, a dark shadow, a avenging demon and mental wonder. He solved a murder case, intimidated criminals with force, verbally threatened their lives, eavesdropped for information, went undercover, and quickly spread fear throughout the city's mafia. Now, while you may be thinking this particular vigilante sounds an awful lot like Batman, it isn't. His big debut wouldn't be published for another long year. The surprising truth is that these earliest adventures belong to none other than the Man of Steel himself. Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster had created one bad Mamba Jamba for 1938. Max Flesher's animated series from the 1940s also kept right in line with that same theme. He approached Superman's exciting adventures with a hint of the eerie mystery that comes from film noir. There was a certain mystique surrounding the city of Metropolis and their hero in acrobatic tights. At this point in time, the Man of Steel was known to the general public as a self-made mythic figure in a gritty fight against evil and corruption found both in America and abroad. It was a very human struggle for a character that felt very far from alien. A lot has changed since then, though. Those swashbuckling days are behind him. Superman is now godlike, and as such, he can only be a symbol of righteousness and hope lest he become a villain. He does everything upright and respectfully. He is optimistic, if not even a bit naive. He is the big blue boy scout, and we should all be proud of it. But in practice, those attributes have presented a problem. Superman's stories are routinely bogged down by sci-fi exposition, his good old boy values translate into a self-righteous persona, and he's too often reduced to a stubborn man who's easily provoked. In order to fend off the warlords and alien invaders that have become a reoccurring threat, he has to be written with a measurable power. That hidden figure in the night has slowly become the heavenly figure in the sky. A disconnect has developed between Superman and the rest of us. Why did this evolution occur? Why did he have to become so alien? Why did his stories get boring? Well, the answer is, someone crashed Superman's party. Yeah, that someone. When Bruce Wayne came onto the scene in 1939, he was similar to other characters the culture was already familiar with, but he offered a bit more. He was the world's greatest detective, and this caped crusader was part of the new superhero era, with underwear on the outside and all. DC Comics was growing their lineup and distinctions would need to be made between characters. Since Batman was the newer entry, it was Superman who would need to slowly be amended. And with that, his stories would have to depart from similarities found within the two heroes' journeys. Writers would soon capitalize on the built-in distinction between them, Superman's alien heritage. So, although his Kryptonian backstory had previously been treated as a mere launchpad and explanation for his earthly adventures, it would now be used as a centerpiece that distinguished the genres. While this wasn't an instantaneous shift, it was certainly steady and unyielding. Once it took hold, the science fiction dial would be turned all the way up to 11. Unfortunately, while many comic book readers are acutely aware of the nuances found within the stories of the modern-day Superman and his 50 years of mythology, his overall image is less engrossing in the public eye it is undeniably apparent that his stories are not easily translated to mass audiences anymore, and as a result, writers continually resort to making him burdened by dreary introspection or turning him into a sacrificial lamb. That's the inherent dilemma when a character becomes a god. Their accessibility greatly diminishes, and their stories stop feeling fun. 
And that is the Man of Steel's greatest weakness, not kryptonite. He is most vulnerable to the hands of writers who favor another hero over him. From the start, they allowed the developing character of the Dark Knight to incrementally rob Superman of some of his most compelling attributes. So now, today, while Superman is busy wrestling with the internal struggles of a guardian over all humankind, Batman remains comfortably earthbound and relatable. The Dark Knight forced Superman out of the shadows of crime-fighting and into the limelight of sci-fi do-gooder, with a little melancholy sprinkled throughout. A snooze fest. Now it goes without saying, Bob Kane successfully created a remarkable character in Batman, and over 75 years of history is a testament to that. His stories have spawned some of the most compelling villains in all of comic book history, and his world has inspired some of the most celebrated films, animated series, graphic novels, and video games of our time. Superman fans can sometimes be resentful of this. They tend to blame the modern culture for not accepting their beloved hero the way the culture of the 30s, 40s, and 50s did. But I don't think of it so much as a morality shift. As I see it, in the Golden Age, the culture was still looking at a Superman that was far more similar to Batman than what we have today. I believe they liked Superman then for the same reasons we like Batman now. He does exactly what we would hope to do if we had the power, and that's what makes his adventures so satisfying. Overall, I think it's safe to assume that the natural growth of the comic book industry would have led to Superman's slow dilution. The more characters introduced, including those from Marvel, the more DC writers would have to make adjustments to Superman. The more superheroes that challenged his supremacy, the more his power levels would have to rise to the occasion. It was inevitable. Yeah, sure, inevitable. But, that being said, it does not change who it was that threw the first punch and who it still is that challenges the position of Superman in pop culture to this very day. I'm looking at you, Batman, world's greatest detective.